Going to number 10, we have up close and personal with Area 51. In September 2017, YouTube channel UFO Seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tickaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water towers. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our 7th spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our 6th spot we have Steven Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. 
This photo shows an A12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number three, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Mad. This is a photo that was taken of someone known as the Mad. His real name was George Metesky, and he was the man who terrorized New York City for 16 years while he planted explosives in public places like an absolute psychopath. I guess he was apparently angry about a workplace injury he had suffered in the years prior to his terrible crimes, so of course the normal reasonable jump to make would be not that. While no one should have ever had to suffer because of these crimes, the good news is that while he planted 33 and set off 22 of them, miraculously only 15 people ended up injured in the end. This photo of him behind bars is extremely eerie thanks to his creepy smile and haunting eyes. I might be the only one who feels it, but it just seems like something's off, you know? Coming in at number 9, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming into number eight, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticized the response to the Freedom of Information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily 
redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from very high in the sky. From browsing Google, around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to intel from the website Life Science, though, it is thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. Coming into number seven, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived, or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. Alright, coming into number six, this is the big one, it is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1995 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous, obviously. Let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. Coming into number five, we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding alien corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise, but I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favourite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species? species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak confirms, allegedly anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug-like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Kerry thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like it's been photoshopped today. If Kodak did call this authentic, 
I haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and Clark Gable. Two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now, the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft, or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U-2 spy plane and the SR-71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the Rumored Aurora Project. So, so, what is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A-12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah, when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed that the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our number nine spot today, we have ancient preparations. This is a photo that isn't necessarily very old, but it's of some stuff that has been around for a lot longer than cameras have. These images were taken in the ancient city of Herxheim, which is located in Germany and dates back to about 7,000 years ago. The photo shows some artifacts, which at a first glance don't look too dark or creepy or weird, but just wait. Apparently Apparently, these artifacts and remains show clear signs of flesh stripping. Yeah, okay, wasn't expecting that one. Apparently, this was a process that was part of the preparation before consuming human flesh. So, yeah, maybe it is a pretty dark photo after all. I'm not exactly sure how all of these things were used or what exactly the process looks like, but I think that maybe that information might just be better left in the past. In our number eight spot today, we have the lone scientist. This is a photo that comes to us from shortly after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Many of us, of course, already know plenty about it, but if unfamiliar, in April of 1986, there was an explosion and fire from a nuclear reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This explosion happened 
when there was an issue as they were trying to begin an experiment which was set out to actually make the reactor more safe. Unfortunately, the way this reactor was designed placed too much responsibility in the hands of the operator. One thing led to another and it was a huge disaster and went on to become one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The amount of radiation in the air caused alarms at the Forsmark nuclear power plant in Sweden, which was over a thousand kilometers away, so it certainly wasn't anything to take lightly. That is exactly why this photo of a lone scientist going down into the dark radioactive filled area near the meltdown is so terrifying to look at. It reminds us of the bravery of those who went to help after the disaster, and it also reminds us just how scary some of the things we have on this planet really are. In our number 7 spot today we have the figures of the fire. This photo is both extremely unsettling and super captivating as it shows a scene after the great fire at Madame Tussauds in 1925. Of course this wax museum is famous for the extremely lifelike wax figures that are created and find their home there, so you can only imagine the aftermath of a fire. These lifelike figures, but with missing heads and appendages, burnt skin and hair, and just clothing in disarray. Seeing this photo for the first time without knowing the story about it was definitely a bit of a confusing and terrifying experience. The heads on the ground really freaked me out for a full 5 seconds. As scary as it is, I'm just glad to hear that it's not real and just some creative casualties rather than what this photo appears to be at first. In our number 6 spot today we have All Hallows Eve. In this day and age when Halloween time comes around we see all types of costumes. We see a few spooky scary ones, but for the most part we see princesses or fairies or basketball players or some sort of pop culture reference, but back in the day Halloween was a terrifying time. I'm not saying that because people dressed as all these elaborate scary creatures, I just mean that the absolute scraps people would throw together to make a Halloween mask are truly scarier than any creature I could come up with. This photo just shows a nice little family as they're ready to celebrate the spookiest day of the year, and oh my gosh it is actually terrifying. Like I feel like I'm looking at a still from the movie Strangers or something. It looks so terrifying, but it's likely just a completely harmless and innocent celebration. Honestly, while I'm kind of overseeing people show up to Halloween parties as cats, I'll take that over a potato sack any day apparently. In our number 5 spot today we have the experiment. This is a photo that comes from some experiments that were being conducted from the French neurologist Duchenne de Bologna. He was best known for his use of photographs during his experiments, as evidenced by, well, this video. He was also known for his research into the use of electrical stimulation of muscles, and of course these photos really helped to capture exactly that. These photos have gone down in history, not even necessarily for what they show medically, but just because of how startling they are and the often grotesque facial expression seen on the patient. The experiment being conducted in this shot was meant to determine how exactly the muscles in the face produce facial expressions, which he believed at the time were directly linked to the soul of a man. Of course these strange faces the patient is making are due to the electrical stimulation, but the photos from his experiments truly make it look like the patients are going through some kind of torment or torture. As far as I know, the man in this photo was totally fine both before and after the experiment, despite what it may appear as, which is always what we want to hear. In our number 4 spot today we have the Spectre. This is a photo that was taken in England in 1963 and it became known as the Spectre of the Newbie Church. That of course is because of the ghostly figure that can be seen in this photo. I'm always a little suspicious of ghost photos, some are certainly more convincing than others, but Photoshop in 1963 wasn't exactly as accessible and easy as it is now. The photo is said to have been taken by Reverend K.F. Lord inside of the Newby Church which is located in North Yorkshire, England. Of course, I mean like many of us are going to do, people were really skeptical of this apparition and just believed that it was a well done case of double exposure, which to be fair is entirely possible possible. The reverend continued to swear up and down however that the photo was not doctored, so at this point there's no proof to prove either side and it's just a game of he said she said. So what do you guys think? Apparition caught slipping or is the reverend making it up? In our number 3 spot today we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18, 1980. This photograph comes from the photographer 
photographer Robert Landsberg, who of course was in the area at the time of the eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was so close to the explosion, he knew he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but he was also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but he wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number 2 spot today we have the boneyard. This is a photo that comes from what is called a boneyard. Basically, the photo was taken during a time when it was normal for overcrowded cemeteries to dig up skeletons after 5 years if the family didn't continue to pay for them to stay buried. Yeah. It's not a great rule, but it happened and it's a part of our weird dark history. This particular photo comes from near the Colon Cemetery in Cuba and it shows what they did with these dug up bones. They put them in this boneyard that eventually grew to be 30 feet deep. That is so creepy. This photo shows how the area became a popular tourist destination and this photo is said to have been taken after the Spanish American War and it shows two American soldiers playing with bones. Maybe not the best idea, I mean a little respect for those who past might be in order. It definitely is an eerie sight to behold. In our number one spot today we have the crypt. This is a photo that comes to us from the early 1900s and it shows the area that is beneath the church of Santa Maria della Concezione di Cappuccini, which is located in Rome, Italy. This area is known as the Capuchin Crypt and it is a little eerie to say the least. That is because the walls are lined with skeletal remains. It is said that on the walls there are the remains of 3,700 bodies believed to be the Catholic friars who were buried by their order. It is definitely terrifying to look at and it seems a little nightmare inducing, but the Catholic order insists it isn't meant to be so macabre. They explain that it's actually meant to be a silent reminder of the swift passage of life on earth and our own mortality. Well, I can say it definitely does that. 